Hi, everybody. I am uh, decided to pop in and see if I could record uh, some of the things that I'm noticing that's going on. I've been lots of things happening and I've been thinking about this for a while. So I decided to try and do a quick little um, vlog. So the topic is going to be on this embodiment, healing and the alchemizing power of the eight, you know, this eight year. So just keep this in mind that the eight um, mathematically is two to the third power. So it's an exponential number. And I've said this many times, um, and it means two times two times two. So just try and keep this in mind about the two and the three, because these numbers are very significant and how the eight uh, is a very powerful number in in many ways so let me try and describe what i am talking about so i'm not going to stay on the screen but uh just try to keep that in mind and i want to talk about uh embodiment a bit uh as what i'm noticing with Samantha, oh, there's my phone, sorry. Um, and, you know, I mentioned in a blog, um, maybe a couple of weeks ago that Samantha had actually embodied, you know, meaning that um, I, that was part of the blog, but I saw her one day, um, the spirit of her essence you know i have a way of kind of looking in that looking at that uh the highest highest aspect of the spiritual essence that she is um so many years ago i had seen samantha as like the queen bee you know she's the queen bee i don't know exactly you know uh, i can't explain exactly fully what that means uh but you know she has a particular mission here on the on the planet but um, so anyway, I uh, had drawn an image, I don't can't remember, several, several months ago that I needed to do that, uh, that represented that. So anyway, I saw the image and, uh, you know, this essence was coming down into her body. I was aware of that. Um, and I remember waking up that morning feeling like I need to wear her socks. Uh, so I put a pair of her socks on and, and, you know, thinking, you know, maybe this will help her embody, you know. So I saw that essence uh, come down. I had to do some clearing in the pelvis um, that I was guided to do. And then I saw it, I felt it like anchored to her root. So that's embodiment in a sense, We're, our spiritual essence uh, dropping all the way down to the root, so to speak. And then um, subsequently after that, I saw uh, where the earth had actually, uh, it sent up a shot. That's what I saw, it was like this light, lightning bolt from the earth. Um, and it ignited their root and I heard Samantha, you know, jolt because it was kind of a shock to her. And um, then the words came, uh, Kundalini, Kundalini. So this is, uh, in essence, a, a Kundalini activation, and that's what that means, right? So, you know, there's more to it, obviously. Uh, and there's a process then that has to happen with this spiritual essence that comes through and how it then animates the body and it's, it's the connection of your heavenly self and the earthly self, the body, in a sense. And so that's what the, that's what the, the uh, activation from the earth is about. That's what I uh, kind of more intuitively understood, you know, even though I read about Kundalini activation and it's the snake coil at the, you know, the base of the, the root and it uh, uncoils and it goes up to the, uh, the crown. Um, but it is def definitely felt like it was much more than that. It wasn't like I saw a snake or anything, you know, uncoiling. 
but it was a, uh, a, a, I mean, like a bridging of heaven, your heavenly self, and then this vessel that is a physical matter um, body, physical being, and then uh, it's this marriage of uh, your heavenly self and the physical body, because the physical body is like a container. And um, it's, however, uh, it's really not to the same old earth that we've known, the denser 3D human template. Um, because, uh, you know, she wasn't willing to embody to the same template with all the same consciousness of a lower 3D human. And so this human uh, that's emerging now as the earth is changing and all, um, I don't know, vectors or openings uh, to the cosmos, the greater cosmos, the all that is, is open so that we can um, co-create something different and co-create meaning with other with each other but really first we have to see ourselves co-creating with the with the actual the creator the all that is the creator of the all that is so um she's not she wasn't willing to embody until things changed enough to do that and at the at the same time um then the old matter body has to change. So we've been in a, uh, a 3D system that is um, ex polarized, extremely polarized, duality, dualistic, and the even the aspect of the masculine and feminine uh, that is kind of split in the body, you know. So we've been more uh, in this last era or epoch that we've been in, we've been more left brain dominant and um, masculine, linear logic and more the masculine um, aspect uh, has, been, has been dominating. So now we're stepping into um, where the sacred masculine is back the sacred feminine aspect is back, which represents the mother and the father. And we're meant to embody that in our physical human selves uh, so that we can have true balance and we can, we don't have to play in that extreme duality anymore. So in the coming together of these two aspects, what we call the mother and the father, uh, there, you know, that's, that's the two. And I remember, and I've said this, relayed this story many times in different ways at different times, but it, you know, it comes up again and again, uh, that, um, there was this one little boy many years ago, but I didn't know, I don't know him human here physically on, on the planet. Uh, and he was like two years old at the time. And I was, you know, working with another uh, woman who is very much in connection with a lot of the autists and things. So um, this little boy came in and he, you know, told me all this, this story about, uh, um, about these numbers, you know, in a sense. So that the two is represents prime creator because um prime creator in a sense represents masculine and feminine and when these two aspects were quote born really because they were um in this soup of oneness then um i won't go into the details about it, but it, you know imagining that these uh two emanations came from this one source where it's all one and it enabled creator to see itself in a way that it had never seen before uh and that's what we might call masculine the feminine the, the original mother and the father so to speak um 
So, it, I mean, it obviously doesn't know itself in that sense at that point as a mother and father, you know, I mean, that concept comes uh, as we're reflecting. And to me, that's what it feels like now. But anyway, so that's prime creator is the two, the two. Uh, and it gave creation a different awareness when it could see itself. So it's like a mirror, you know, a mirroring effect, so to speak. Um, and that's the number two. And so then when the two came together, uh, it birthed a third principle, which is what we would call the Christo Sophia. And that's the Trinity. Uh, and kind of in the simplistic terms, then that was the first sort of geometry, stable geometry as a triangle. Um, you know, and I know this is simplistic and some people might say, but it's a way of conceptualizing from our perspective um, that uh, the triangle is the first stable geometry, you know, because otherwise if you have two points, then you can only draw a straight line, right? But um, when you have that third principle, then you have um, balance in a sense. So that's why we talk about, to me, this is why we talk about the, uh, the neutral balance as being the tri-wave, you know, uh, or the trinity. And so uh, he was saying, so then um, like the number two to the third power is a very powerful number because uh, and it's an exponential number and that's how we get the eight so the two times two times two the three twos is it kind of in a way mirroring that original creation of that tri-wave or the trinity you know and um so uh, we are at a point where we can embody this trinity. And I would say before we were kind of been wobbling back and forth in duality and extreme polarity. Um, you know, like I've said before, like sort of like on a political system, we go too far this way, then we try to go back that way. And uh, we're constantly going back and forth um, trying to, to stay in balance. And so in a sense, it was this missing eight, in a sense. Um, so if we think simplistically, this is simplistic, um, and this is kind of how my mind kind of conceptualizes it to keep it simple, as, as simple as possible. Because uh, really, some of these things, it really need to be, it needs to be simple so that everybody can understand in a sense. But um, so uh, if we think of just about the seven body chakras, right? And we haven't known about this eighth chakra or the high heart. Some people have known for a few years or many years, but um, we're still operating in uh, a seven chakra system, even though we're kind of more 3D. Um, but operating from a self-identity of ego, lower ego, and, you know, those kinds of things. So, uh, in a sense, and I'm omitting a lot of things, obviously, because otherwise I could just go on and on. Uh, so I don't want to go back to the beginning of, you know, how this happened or, uh, the lower ego and that things. I'm assuming people that are listening to this are on board with, uh, you know, to an extent to where, where, where I am, I guess. Um, so with this missing eighth octave, in a sense, some people are calling the dimensions as an octave, and which is correct as well. Uh, it's also the high heart, right? Um, in this, in the chakra system that I learned, which feels accurate to me is, you know, this high heart is um, also a, uh, the eighth dimensional connection, right? So, and I've seen other people, they put the eighth chakra somewhere else, but 
to me, it makes sense that it's at, in the body. It's part of the body, just like the seven body chakras and um, the ninth chakra would be the ninth dimensional access would be at the brain stem, that heaven's gate uh, area, as, as we call it, as some call it. So uh, when that's been missing, the eighth dimensional access, we've been kind of waffling back and forth between uh, duality, you know, and polarity. And so now this eight has activated. And I, even though most, a lot of people were, there were people working with the eighth chakra before, it feels different even though, um, you know, I might have been working with it before. It's different when you actually get there and the planet is now changing in the cosmos and the galactic uh, doorways are all open. You know, if you, if you saw the last, my last blog as well um, about the eight and the uh, uh, Orion's nebula as this kind of eighth dimensional hub that connects the, uh, the galaxy and, you know, the cosmos together. Uh, this is why we're in this eight year. So it's, it's very different um, now actually feeling it and experiencing it. So um, where am I going with all this? So part of what's happening now is this eight as a, uh, a language of, you know, God's source, right? The numbers are also like a language in a sense. And so this eight I've been experiencing in my own physical body uh, and what it's doing to resolve duality in the physical, right? Because when we're operating in that polarity, even um, the electric and the magnetic aspects of our body, right? We're supposed to be electromagnetic. Uh, and also then the currents that run through our body is, uh, is changing. And so the other morning, um, I woke up and I was feeling this eight like in my body energetically. So, uh, seeing it. And then I kept seeing this two to the third power, two to the third power. And I could feel it where it was knit, let's say knitting is the word that's coming, knitting the body back together. Because even at the uh, atomic level, if we think of what we've called electrons and protons, they have a positive charge and a negative charge. Um, even in extreme duality, those aspects felt like they weren't really quite functioning in a, um, in a comfortable way. So where the uh, electric just feels sharp and uh, unbalanced, right? So I could feel it neutralizing with these, and I could feel it like, right, especially at the high heart and the whole chest area, this number eight that was um, literally like knitting uh, everything back together, especially particularly the left and the right. Um, and there's been a lot of activity this week with the electric and the magnetic, uh, trying to come back into, into a neutral balance, so to speak. So there's a lot of things happening in the physical body. And, uh, so you may be uncomfortable as these changes are, are taking place you know, discomfort in the, in the body with my fingers, you know, uh, feeling like, um, you know, I'm clumsy and my fingers are, aren't working right and more energy that wants to be moved or, or cleared out, uh, more, uh, more stuff that's just trying to be cleared out. And if we think about our neuro neurological system running on these electric currents that run through the neurology, 
uh, and also from what I understand, the, the fascia um, and how muscles are um, how muscles are stimulated by the neurons. You know, all these aspects of our bodies that run on this electromagnetic uh, these electromagnetic currents in our connection with the earth, uh, how our atoms come together. All of that is trying to change now and adapt as this eight is activating. So again, two to the third power, you know, meaning the, the mother and the father as, as one, which they operate as a, as one unit. Um, and really quote, shouldn't be separated. Uh, and there's many different ideas about how it came to be that way. Um, and lately I'm more adopting this, well, not adopting, but feeling inside that there is really nothing that no entity or anybody did to me. We perhaps, you know, uh, or I should maybe say I, cause I don't know, I can't speak for everybody, but, um, that I co-created this experience to understand what it would be like if we split this uh, mother and father aspect, which is fundamental to the creation in our universe, you know, and the three as a, as a trinity. So, uh, and what that means and what that entails. So again, to the third power, to this trinity, you know, like, the cosmic mother and the father uh, exponentially creating, uh, but create in, in balance, you know, create with this trinity. So much, a lot of resolution happening uh, in the body, you know. Uh, another aspect that kind of relates to this is uh, uh, in our Patreon group, we've been talking about um, this representation of masculine and feminine as in, in, in terms of the goddess uh, Newt. Um, and I'm not, you know, really well versed in Egyptian mythology, but for some reason, Newt and Jeb, which was supposed to be her husband, um, and then they were separated is the sort of the mythology of, of the two. And uh, then the two of them trying to, you know, come back together, uh, in a sense. So longing for each other again. So to me, it's like that tale of, okay, we split this um, as a masculine and, and so that we can have this experience of separation and what it would be like if we separated the, the mother and the father or the masculine and feminine, you know. Uh, and... The word, somebody in our group, the word gestalt came up, that it was, you know, perhaps it's not so much this split of masculine feminine, but this gestalt of the masculine feminine, just like the, this two that's intertwined, they're always together um, and shouldn't be split in a sense. Uh, and gestalt... You know, that's a word that I think Carl Jung used a lot uh, in his work. And it means uh, understanding the wholeness of something and that we can't really understand something by just peeling apart as individual parts and trying to understand how it works when you put it, when you put it together, you know, uh, that's the, that's the idea, you know, I'm, some of you know, I'm uh, uh, my master's, I have a master's in social services. And so, you know, I worked with families and, and things like that. And uh, that was family systems theory comes from that, the idea of uh, the family as a unit. And you can't necessarily understand one person's behavior or their dysfunction by separating them out and um, saying that this, this one person is bec it's dysfunctional because you have to look at the whole unit in order to understand the dynamic of what 
how that family operates. So this is kind of similar in that sense, the, the gestalt of a masculine feminine when they're really one, you know? And so we try to understand what a female is or what a male is, um, but we have to see them, the unit as one, but one within our body. And I'm not saying anything about uh, being androgynous or gender assignment or anything like that. This is not an agenda about that at all. So, because each one of us can be that masculine feminine within us, whether you're expressing as a female body or a masculine body, you know, and why that's important is because we can't define what a human is until these aspects are really one, functioning as one, a gestalt as one. So we're trying to, um, there seems to be an agenda, a larger agenda about um, what that's going to look like or people being told, you know, this is what it should like. This is what you have to accept. And yes, our old concepts are, um, I don't want to even say breaking down anymore, but it's more like a resolution within of what we have, how we have lived in the past or how we've defined male and female in the past. There's a, there's a healing process in this, uh, with this eight as two to the third power eight, you know? So I could feel and sense that that was what was happening. So it's not, you know, and I've said this too, we have to forget about everything that we've known in the past. And, you know, it's not even about forgetting and what does this healing look like? It's literally like a resolution within, with this eight, like I could feel it in my body, uh, the healing of the past by resolving within us the past, past mistakes, you know, whether it's in the lineage, and this is the alchemical power of this number. And we can't think it through. I don't know. I can't tell you exactly what it's going to look like on the other end. But this is part of the, the exploring and understanding is coming to this understanding. So we have people trying to dictate, you know, to us what, you know, it's going to look like and what it has to look like and what, uh, you know, what kind of language we're supposed to use. But there's a piece here of evolving out of the old, where you can't just erase it from the mind in a sense, or have somebody dictate to us what that's going to be and what the new language is going to be. It's like, we will know and there's a process of allowing this evolution to happen. Uh, and simultaneously, you know, I understand that there is somewhat of a fight going on or a resistance to what they're trying to tell us how it's going to be and how it's going to look. So, but I feel like, you know, in my own body, what I was experiencing, like what is going on here, you know, this, this resolution, what does this look like? And it's literally resolving things at a meta consciousness and cognitive level. It's like supra, not even consciousness, because it's, it's physical. Um, and I've also talk, been talking a lot about uh, that the human being, this human template is made to alchemically resolve all the distortions that have been created. Now that sounds like a tall order, but this is part of the evolutionary process that we will alchemically 
resolve the distortions within us. And that changes consciousness. That is a, that's our conversation with the creator in a sense. Okay, I am here and I am embodying this mission of what the human was created to do. And this is how I'm doing it. This is how we're doing it. You know, and, and it's almost like this with this vast opening, uh, you know, and obviously my uh, connection with Samantha and um, just being in her energy field uh, of what this all means, you know, it's this, it's this open communication now in its physical, uh, it's sensory as if the sensory system was designed for this. And that's what Samantha has said in the past that, you know, our sensory system is a communication link with source. You know, this is our experience and it's beyond words. It's beyond uh, cognition uh, of what we call the mind and the brain. Um, and we're using our brains obviously to interpret things in a sense of this plane that we this uh, holographic reality that we, you know, exist in and co-create. So this eight feels like a very significant activation for this um, resolution to take place, resolving the past. You know, I was kind of um, listening to something uh, last night uh, you know, I've been listening to more kind of these podcasters that talk about the, um, the state of affairs, politics, you know, uh, as the U S elections are coming up. And sometimes I li like to listen to like really, uh, I don't know what we might call spiritual things or woo woo things. I mean, I don't know. Um, but I've been drawn more to, okay, I got to listen to more of some of these other thinkers of what's and what their perspectives are and everything uh and this whole tagline that the uh i guess the democrats have lately about um we're not going back you know and i said that too but uh again it can't be it can't be dictated to us and this idea of unburdening ourselves of the past and i was like huh that sounds kind of creepy the way it was coming out, you know? Um, so then, you know, experiencing this eight and the, the two to the third power, like energetically in my body, just feeling the energy of that. I don't know if you can feel it. Um, and I'm sure other people are feeling it too, but in other ways, you know, they might have other ways of describing it. But, um, When we resolve it within us, if we experience the peace of the past and that we don't have to take it with us because it's resolved. Otherwise, we keep playing out the same theme until we feel like we're at peace with it within us, you know? And this is part of what this healing and embodiment is about and why Sammy is willing to embody now uh, and make the adaptations because she can, because the matter, the earth matter is changing. The subatomic, what we call subatomic particles is changing. The quantum field, the quantum, I don't even know if that's the right word, and how the quantum is accessing uh, the original creator, the source, the all that is, you know. And, um, it has to be physical in our bodies and to experience that peace within us uh, in order to move forward and really not take the past with us. It doesn't mean we're going to necessarily quote, forget everything, but you know, taking kind of the lessons, the nuggets, the uh, redefining some of the teachings and stuff, but uh, it's through this inner process of um, inner peace, in a sense. And 
that uh, we have to, I don't know, if, I, don't, I shouldn't say have to, but um, we're getting to a stage where we can understand this gestalt of the two, the cosmic mother and the father, when it's not separated, what does this look like in the physical human realm, you know, and being able to, uh, as more people then be begin to trust in that inner knowing where it's so deep down into the pelvis, right? So, um, and, and down to the root where we're all embodying to something different, to a higher octave, right? And so the inner healing and the peace of the electric and the magnetic functioning as one, truly as one. Uh, and what, what is that going to feel like and look like, you know, when uh, we can really embody this? Because this, that is where we're getting to. And it's uncomfortable right now. It's very physical. Um, but anyway, the, uh, and it can't be dictated to us. Uh, we have to, um, trust that we will know, you know, and I, I feel like it's going to become such a powerful inner knowing, inner knowing for more people that that wave, uh, is just going to become so powerful that the, the uh, globalist agendas uh, can't can't succeed. Now, is it going to look rocky for a while? A little while longer? Yeah, you know, probably. And like I said in the beginning, um, we're doing this dance right now of you know embodying things and allowing what is happening within us to emerge and uh, kind of resisting this uh, coercion that is trying to be imposed on us, you know, because um, the other forces, let's say, that want to keep us in lower um, 3D extreme polarity are uh, also know that this time was was coming. Uh, they've all read all the same materials, you know, I feel like uh, about uh, the future and what that's going to, and that they, this time is going to come. And, uh, you know, they've been strategizing, maneuvering to stop that from happening. Um, and so while we're in this, you know, even in development, right, there's a, there's a vulnerable phase, you know, like raising a baby, they're in a vulnerable phase when you know you have to really protect that uh, baby. Um, and uh, that uh, there are other forces that can slide in when we're trying to figure out what's happening in our body and uh, what am I supposed to believe in and what's the future human going to look like? Um, and we have to kind of allow it to evolve and emerge. Uh, but at the same time, resist this, these other agendas that are trying to slip it in while we're in this kind of nebulous phase, because it is, it is kind of nebulous, you know. Um, but this is where that inner knowing uh, we have to trust. Well, not have to, but it comes to a point where we're trusting the process. Um, and it's uh, also then knowing that there are people who were born for this um, phase you know, people fighting for, uh, you know, free speech on the internet, 
uh, secure spaces where people can chat and, um, you know, join groups, uh, you know, if they're not near you and things like that, you know. Uh, I think a lot of you know, you know what I'm talking about with uh, uh, things like Telegram and um, yeah, I lost my train of thought here. But uh, you know, it's amazing that there are people that were were born for this time, and they're not quote woo woo as like some of us would be, you know, like talking about dimensions and. You know, but maybe they do experience that in their own time by themselves, you know, but they, they, it's like, I've listened to some of these people and I'm like, wow, there's a knowing in them that uh, they were born for this, you know, uh, and some of them are, you know, 20 years younger than me and it's, uh, it's encouraging in that sense. So this is where that idea of it's time to be who you came to be, whatever that thing is you're supposed to be doing, like we're doing it. You know, our kids are autistics. They're doing it. You can't change them for who they are. Um, no matter how much therapy, you know, I know and not, not bad mouthing people or teachers or anybody or therapists or anything. I was one of those parents who have to fix them. You know, we have to make them as functional as possible because it's a, it's a dark, ugly world out there. You know, the whole bit. I mean, I, I understand. So, um, people were, people were made for this, uh, and more and more, especially this beginning of this eight year. I know other people are talking about. You know, there are parallel lives that they're suddenly aware of. Um, and what I've been seeing, one of the other things that I've been seeing is that these, they're like self-imposed blocks that we put on ourselves for this life. And I call it self-imposed because literally it is like self-imposed, you know, put, put these blocks around ourselves, uh, to have a certain kind of life because we wouldn't have been able to deal with all of that knowledge before this time when the earth was ready. So, um, as everything has opened and the this Orion Nebula, which was kind of closed off in a sense, um, has opened and it's opening these, what I call the, the octopus arms going out and reconnecting things, then uh, we're literally removing those, uh, those blocks, you know. So one example is... Um, you know, with Samantha, uh, that she had self-imposed blocks, in a sense, that she was in a lock away, especially between the, the right and left hemispheres of the brain. And so a friend of mine that I talked to um, regularly, like, well, she had the key. She was holding Samantha's key to unlock that uh, corpus callosum, you know, and again, it, hasn't fully landed yet it, it takes time it's going to take time for all of us to uh readjust to this electromagnetic changes it's changing the physiology it's changing the neurology uh of, of all those currents and things um and then uh sammy was having us do uh sort of like a little bit of grid work uh you know as a family we're at this dinner table and um, she said, you know, go underneath. She appointed us to San Antonio, Texas. And so underneath, you know, she was like, go underneath the land there. And obviously this is in another dimensional realm um, that uh, we found a box. Like there was a box under there. And so I uh, took the box out and um, I opened it, excuse me, and there were all these keys in the box. So that was what I was, my vision I was seeing. Uh, and I was like, well, what are these keys? And they said, they're for other people, you know? And I feel like, okay, since I'm, I'm on a video here on a public platform, 
Uh, and even though I don't have a lot of people watching, it's like, it doesn't matter. You know, I'm doing my thing. I don't care who, uh, who watches or doesn't watch uh, at this point. It doesn't matter. Uh, but anyway, so I picked up these keys and they said, she says she's like to send them out to the reality and whoever needs them. So since I'm on this public space, I'm sending them all out. And uh, if one of them is for you, um, that's for you, you know, and there could be different for different things that you've locked away. Uh, she's saying a lot of them is for that high heart, unlock that high heart for people who can't, who haven't been able to, to unlock it yet, or they're waiting for the key. That's how somebody, somebody was holding it, you know. And then uh, I've had another friend recently that I've been chatting with, um, you know, on Telegram, which uh, I've appreciated. Uh, and um, she was seeing it as feathers, like she was like, it's bird and feathers. Uh, and um, it was as if my, my sense about that was that she was holding, like the feathers were a key to holding people's higher selves, you know, until they're ready to drop in. Uh, so the quote, awakening of people, um, is uh, going to exponentially happen this year and next year. Because so nine is also another exponential number. That's three to the second power. So a three, you know, the Trinity squared by uh, the the mother and the father that are that are one. So that will bring more interesting things. Uh, but also more interesting things that's happening, you know, obviously physically. Um, so, you know, we're, we've blocked off timelines ourselves in a sense. And now we're ready to open, unlock with our keys, you know, and it might go on for a couple of years or a few years, I don't know, um, to those other galactic memories um, and what we do with that, uh, you know, is up to each of us will know. Uh, and, you know, I have to say that some of the things that are coming up is that, you know, what, what is an archon? You, some of us may be that archon in a previous expression. Uh, you know, we our, our, our universe is hundreds of billions of years old. I was shown like approximately 950 billion years. Um, and I know I've heard other people saying that as well. So it's, a, it's like an evolution in this universe of beings and um, some mistakes were made that call that caused cataclysms and fallen consciousness, lots of galactic wars. Uh, and um, it's hard to even say that this one race is clean, cleaner than another one. I mean, it's like factions of them may have been fallen or groups, you know, certain groups, but it certainly doesn't mean that the whole entire Lyrans or Pleiadians or Syrians or whatever you want to call them, that they're all fallen, you know, or that they're all somehow cleaner than another one. Uh, this is, I think, part of the discovery we're going to be making as these, uh, as we open these timelines. Um, so really interesting times that we're in. Um, and the alchemizing that's taking place, uh, I feel like it's just started after this August, you know, um, and August was a really intense month and nobody knew August was going to be, I don't think anybody really knew that August was going to be uh, such a powerful punch in a sense. Uh, maybe not for everybody, some people go through it just fine. Uh, you know, and again, other people, are, people go through these phases in different ways at different times, uh, so to speak. Um, 
So and that's all. That's all good. Uh, you know, as souls, as higher self beings, we we planned all this, and it's all is going incredibly well. You know, I mean, in spite of what we might see in the outer world. Uh, and uh, this last point, and then I'll just shut up. Um, that uh, this morning I woke up to this feeling that right now my inner world is more important in a sense than the reality that's being shown. That my inner reality of what I'm experiencing, and that includes our, you know, our thoughts and things, uh, is more important than what the outer world is trying to tell us or convince us of what uh, it should look like or what it is, what, the, what it does look like, um, and the trajectory that uh, we're going to go in. So more and more people, I feel like, are going to, uh, quote, awaken. I mean, I don't even know if that's the right, the right word. Um, and maybe it doesn't matter what we think of awaken is because there are people that are just doing what they felt like they were born to do. And maybe they're not woo and they don't talk about, you know, alien beings or whoever took over the planet or whatever, you know what I mean? But it's like at the heart, they have a sense of um, wisdom and what is really right or wrong. Uh, and at the end of the day, that's what's going to create the new earth, how we're going to co-create something new. Um, so anyway, okay, that's, I think that's about it that I have to say. And I talked longer than I anticipated I would talk, but, um, I hope this makes sense. Um, but yeah, two to the third power, the eight, a powerful um, alchemical number, really. So think about it that way, two to the third power. Um, and I know some people are like, well, it looks like the infinity sign, it would, that just keeps us in a loop. But um, I would say yes and no, it can be in a loop, but now that everything is opened up, this um, uh, the loop is not can be a good thing or a bad thing, but uh, because physically we have to still maintain a somewhat of a container as, as a body, right? The body is like a a container, and um, in a sense. It's infinite in this finite body because the body has to have a, a form, right? So it's finite in that sense, um, meaning that there's a structure and there's a, a boundary of the body, which is really more than this. But anyway, that's a whole other can of worms that uh, I won't go into right now. But uh, the infinity is in the eternity and polarity is part of the Trinity. So infinity in eternity and polarity in Trinity. That's, that's what we're, that's what we've stepped into. Anyway, take whatever resonates and um, blessings to all of you. Take care.